Antonin Scalia's rise to Supreme Court justice is a distinctly American story. The son of an Italian immigrant, he earned his way into Harvard Law School through old-fashioned hard work and determination. In spending time with him, we found something we hadn't expected, a person so unpretentious and down-to-earth, you could easily forget he sits on the Supreme Court. But what stands out is his sharp intelligence and street fighter personality, which he developed growing up in New York City. We used to uh, shoot baskets until it was time to go into dinner. Justice Scalia grew up in Elmhurst, Queens in the late 40s, early 50s, in a conservative, working-class neighborhood. There was a lot of uh, diversity in the backgrounds. There were some were Germans, there were uh, Irish, there were Puerto Ricans, there were English. It was a really mishmash, sort of a New York, New York uh, cosmopolitan neighborhood. Which, so which is yours, the second? It's the second the one. Which one? Up there the with one the... with the air conditioner. It did not have an air conditioner in those days, needless to say. Right. I can <laughs> remember those days. Oh, God. Yeah. With the windows open and you'd uh, listen to the trolley going by and just, just lie there and sweat in the heat. I, I'm surprised to hear you say that, uh, you know, you have all that affection for New York. I didn't expect that. Oh, yeah. Well, I grew up so are you a Yankees my... fan? Absolutely. What yeah. else would I be? His being a real New Yorker is something he realized when his high school band went to march in a parade in Washington, D.C. These people just stood there and looked at us. You know, in New York, people say, hey, play something for us, you know? You <laughs> bums, why don't you play something? You know, they, 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 they were alive. They were <laughs> confrontational. Scalia's father, who emigrated from Sicily as a teenager, became a professor of Romance languages at Brooklyn College. His mother, a first-generation Italian-American, was a schoolteacher until her son was born in 1936. Nino was an only child. You don't have any cousins. No, it's, in, the... it's extraordinary. I have, no, I have no cousins. In an Italian family, yeah. you're the only not only of your parents, but of the whole yeah, family. Yeah. I mean, I cannot imagine the doting. Come on, now lay off. I, I, yes, I was spoiled. What do you think, having all that attention focused on you? I had a very secure feeling. So many people who loved me and uh, who would look out for me. I was a good speller. Yeah, well, my, my mother was, you know, she was a former teacher. So we went back with him to PS13, his old elementary school in Elmhurst, where he stood out from the beginning. So if we looked at your report card, it would never say you got in trouble? No. No. Absolutely not. Be straight A's, too. Really? Absolutely. Straight A's? The Ab whole time? Come on. Would I lie? No. If, no, if you, if you can't lie. trust me, who can you trust, right? I see. <laughs> Memorabilia. Up in one of his old classrooms, okay. there it was in black and white his old report cards. Wow. You missed very few days of school. Mm -hmm. You were never late, and you never got anything ever less than an A. The same was true at Xavier in Manhattan, a military parochial high school run by the Jesuits. Scalia was a star, first in his class all four years, A's in Greek and Latin and everything else. I was never cool. <laughs> were you a bookworm? Were you one of those guys? I, I was a greasy grind. You were? Yeah. I worked really hard. My, my father and my mother uh, put me to that. And I, I enjoyed that. I don't like doing anything badly. His years at Xavier, where he went to Mass in this church, deepened his Catholic faith. Did you ever, ever want to be a priest? Gave that some thought. And decided no. And decided he was not calling me. What is the connection between your Catholicism, your Jesuit uh, education, and your judicial philosophy? It has nothing to do with how I decide cases. My job is to interpret the Constitution uh, accurately. And indeed, there are, there are anti-abortion people who think that the Constitution requires a state to prohibit abortion. They say that the Equal Protection Clause requires that you treat a, a helpless human being that's still uh, in the womb uh, uh, the way you treat uh, other human beings. I, I think that's wrong. I think when the 
Constitution says that persons are entitled to equal protection of the laws. I think it uh, clearly means walking around persons. You don't count pregnant women twice. He's not the only Catholic on the court. There are four others. I've sort of been pleased that, that that has not been a big deal, that there are five Catholics on the court, because I don't think religion is one of the things that divides us. I do think ethnicity is. But you could see that if there is a sixth Catholic on the court, that there would be some kind of protest out there. Yeah, maybe. Oh, next appointee to the court is going to be uh, a female Protestant Hispanic. If you could find that woman, she's in. His confirmation hearings in 1986 were a breeze. The Senate vote was unanimous. Appointed by Ronald Reagan, he was sworn in at age 50, the first Italian-American to ever serve on the Supreme Court. I was astounded at the amount of mail I got from Italian-Americans. Thank you. Who were so proud, and I think the reason is they have this mafioso thing hung around their neck. You know, you can, you can have an Italian governor, but he could still be a crook. But an Italian Supreme Court justice, that meant, oh, <laughs> meant a lot to them. It was a sign of integrity, of uh, honesty, of intellectual accomplishment.